Hello, everyone. Welcome to Word Funk. I am Leon Thomas. I am joined by Austin Yorski and Johnny Maloney. Uh, Austin, what what what's with torts? <laughs> I was just explaining to Johnny before uh, we hit the record button that I have torts reading. I also have civil procedure and property reading for law school, and I was just trying to explain to him how, uh, like, I speak English, but yeah. law is like half Latin and then half garbage word trash salad. It's like d- deliberately dense and difficult, but not because um, it's clearer. <laughs> it's just like that old timey people started saying stuff and we're afraid to change it. Or like it's so like calcified that there's just no like time or there's like there's like no benefit to like going back and changing this stuff. stuff. So like I'm reading this here. It's uh, I have to learn about uh <sighs> property or possessory estates and fee subject to executory limitation and executory interest transfers, uh, which is like when you make uh, a grant tour transfers property to a, th- a second party who then uh, if certain conditions are met can transfer it to a third party. And if that sounds like if your brain just slid off that and you zoned out because it didn't sound interesting, like, Hey, welcome to seven hours of my day every day. And then, of course, uh, you seal the deal with the ceremonial vaping. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh, my God. So I, I actually do have interesting law stuff to talk about if we get there. I also have roughly, let me check, 69,000 questions. Um, so okay. we, we're, we're packed to the gills with content, uh, just also stress. Okay. Are you stressed, mm-hmm. Austin? I mean- I can never, this is the... I can never tell, you know. Like, yeah. I, like I should, I should clarify here because you and I have been, we, all three of us, as a matter of fact, have been speaking to each other via the magic of the internet for many years now. <clears throat> but, like Leon, Leon, I can read because mm-hmm. when when Leon gets bothered by something, he gets even more taciturn than normal, and there's a there's a, a grimace <laughs> I can hear in his voice. Where it's like his his mouth does not want to open any more than the necessary amount. That's pretty accurate, to make I'd to say. make the required word come out. But yeah. but Austin, I... you I've always had trouble reading you because you are just uh, you you have one level. I try to always be positive and give out good vibes, good energy. I think it's just kind of a bummer when people are downers. Um, not that that's not a legitimate, like emotional state. I just try to be cognizant yeah. of that and have kind of a more control over myself. That's, I can remember. That sounds like something I would read when I open up a fortune cookie. It's kind of yeah. a bummer when people are downers. <laughs> it's just like, it's totally within your control. Um, the way you express yourself, not the way you feel right. Because yeah. things can act upon you, but what you do with that is up to you. And I try with, you know, with everything I can to not, uh, come across in a way that makes other people uncomfortable. Um, like sure. I can remember, like very specifically, the last time I was angry. I think I was like 19, and I very much wanted to hit somebody. And that's yeah. it's been like six years now since the last time I was like genuinely enraged. That's and like that's really that's really admirable. Not like not <laughs> not that you know it's been a long time since you've been angry, because that's you you know like you said you, you can't really control how you feel. But mm. the pursuit of of trying really hard to regulate how you respond to people that's something mm. i have I have trouble with that i I legitimately have trouble with that i've been I'm a very very moody person and I'm like no it's it's true like i I, I worry that I'm ruled too strictly by my emotions. And it's it's almost certainly an overcorrection of the way I used to be as a teenager when I let everything affect me and I was a, just a total disaster mess of like awfulness. And I probably should be on some sort of medication to regulate these things, but I can't afford it because Florida. Do you guys know what Voldemort did? New, uh, medic- quick news flash medicated? though, Austin. I'm really sorry to tell you this, but it's not just yeah. limited to Florida. No, but yeah. specifically our governor uh, declined funds that would allow me to have insurance because something something socialism um yeah because that just, just doesn't work for anybody <sighs> anyway so like i'm i don't know i don't know if this is interesting is it interesting i'm, people I'm not i'm not boasting here like i'm sorry that that like i wasn't i'm not tooting my own horn i'm not trying to lord anything <laughs> over you guys you understand that no mm. no you're good 
Now, I'm like in the worst mood, but I'm try I I've been like I try lately anyway, you know, I've sort of been like aware of how I can can get. Mm. So I I try not to let it become like <laughs> uh, <laughs> like in that voice. Um I've always yeah. thought that Leon had a really uh, like admirable control of his. I don't know, at least his, his public presence. I know you've tweeted before, like, <laughs> uh, like my strength is knowing when not to have a meltdown on social media. Oh yeah, it's yeah. like that's really cool that you like you're self aware yeah. enough because a lot of people on the internet are not. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, I've seen a lot of, um, I've seen a lot of social media meltdowns uh, <laughs> among among people, and I, I'm not I'm not trying to. You're be welcome. Like, I could, I'm, I'm, I'm glad like, I could give you a front seat. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, people people I know like in the business, and people I know who are like vaguely uh, connected to it. I've seen them ha- go through um, very public uh, social media meltdowns because they're like, I mean, and I, you know, I share things about myself, you know, in public, and that's fine. But like, there's like the edge uh where people will just kind of go on twitter and be like ah i hate everyone and especially my former employer <laughs> that's like that's like a thing for like when people uh left or were fired by my previous uh um uh, I, w- I shouldn't say employer the pl- the place that housed some of my videos for a long your time your venue uh people yeah, yeah, one of my venues. Uh people had this like um habit, I guess, of like burning that bridge. And if you're never going to go back on the bridge, you figure why not burn it? But I also feel like um there's your how do I put this? It, it it um it's not entirely professional. I mean, some people had perfectly good reasons why to do that, so I don't do that <laughs> much at all. Excuse me, but <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a but... total subtweet of an episode. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but um, I also feel like um, the people who get like the worst of your venom better really deserve it. Like the people who are just like shitty employers um eh, you know people are just people a lot most most things uh that happened between like a lot of people and channel awesome for example were not so much malicious so much as they were like screw-ups um i have zero bad blood with uh channel awesome management my reasons for leaving uh the company were like a series of business decisions um that all sort of culminated um, Which, incidentally, so. a series of business decisions, worst children's book ever. <laughs> Have I ever explained? Like, I, I don't think I've ever like. I, I don't think I've ever even hinted at like like why I, I left. There's not. It's not a secret. I just there's just. It's not interesting. I, I don't so think I we've ever gone over it specifically, it. but I always figured that it was it was just something rather innocuous, like. It I know is. I know it, that they were they were pretty um regimented about about their scheduling. <clears throat> I think um about like on air but haven't you didn't you tell us that you just weren't getting any views? Mm, uh, exactly. Um but I, I mean I'll 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 explain um, without going into like any kind of personal details. Um basically when I became part of the company and when a lot of people become part of the company there are a series of positives that come with being part of channel awesome um as well as like a few negatives but that'll happen at any time you know you you anytime you get something you're giving away a little bit of something yeah. else but you the know, chicken wings there's... were really great but then the morning after the chicken wings right and you have to decide whether or not you really wanted those chicken wings i usually do want the chicken wings. i want, I want the um, chicken wings too yeah, the what the main positive with being part of Channel Awesome, of course, is exposure. I mean, they don't pay you; they pay you in exposure. And I'll be perfectly honest; they're you know, uh, being part of uh, the company was helpful in the beginning, very much in the beginning, like at the start of things. Yeah, that's what I um, meant by my. That's what I remember you saying yeah, to us. Yeah, I mean, but after a while that exposure became i became reliant on it 
I became reliant on my videos, you know, doing okay, and then they go up on Channel Awesome, and then all of my fans go there to see the show, which is not a horrible thing when you think about it in, in a certain way, but then you start thinking, oh, I have no control over my show. Yeah, and I wasn't, I wasn't thrilled about that, um, and after a while, I'm like, geez, like, how, how, I, and I didn't like the I I didn't like that. So I, over the course of about a year uh, prior to leaving, I basically told you know my audience whenever I have an episode, I'm like, go here to my YouTube channel right here. This is where you go, not anywhere else. You go right here to my YouTube channel and you subscribe. That is how you watch my show. And what people normally do when they're part of Channel Awesome is like, hey, my thing's up on YouTube. And then a day later, they're like, hey, my thing's up on Channel Awesome. You go there. And I was like, I just stopped doing that. And I would promote my show on YouTube over and over again until people got the idea that this is where you go to see Renegade Cut. You don't go anywhere else. And eventually, um, it worked. Uh, my... Um, I, I flipped things. Basically, it got to the point where only a very small fraction, according to my Google Analytics, of my viewers were watching through embeds at Channel Awesome, and basically, it worked. I started. Um, I started getting just... your Patreon emails. That's that's when I, that's when I jumped I from watching you from Channel Awesome to uh, to just going right to your YouTube. Was when I got mailouts. Yeah. I was like, Oh, Leon! Except it sounded more like, <laughs> Oh, Leon! Oh my. Um, so that's like, that was the one positive, the, the one big positive was exposure, but then it became like a crutch and then I got rid of it and that positive wasn't there anymore. Uh, the other positive with being part of Channel Awesome um, is that, you know, I'm, I'm not a performer, you know, I'm not an actor, but when I got hired by the company, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll be in one of those big anniversary movies. <clears throat> Wouldn't that be kind of neat? Um, I got picked up by the company before they started shooting Suburban Nights, uh, but, you know, by then they'd already finished writing the script, so there was almost no chance I was going to be part of that, which was fine. And then they did To Boldly Flee, and I was not invited to be part of that, which, again, was fine. And then they did that The Uncanny Valley thing, which was an anniversary event, but, like, because they didn't bring everyone in. They just said, all right, you do this, and you do this, and you do this. And they were actually pretty good segments. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not bashing it, but I was also not invited to be part of that. But again, this was not that big of a deal. I just figured, well, eventually I'll be part of it, and I'll just sort of like tick that little box on my bucket list. You know, like, okay, I did that now, and now that's done, and it was not a big deal, because again, I'm not an actor. Um, and then they just stopped doing them. And I totally understand why, because that sounds like a real pain in the butt mm. and a lot of work. And I'm sh and but in my mind, and and again, like there's probably like tons of perfectly good reasons to not do it, you know. So I'm not I'm not mad at the decision, but it also feels like it would be like if Vince McMahon said, "Okay, WWE will continue, but we're not having WrestleMania ever again," and it's like. That's weird because we, everything is sort of built around that. Um, so that positive just didn't exist anymore. Um, the other positive is making professional contacts and frankly, just friends. But the thing is, I made my contacts and I made my friends and we're all still friends. You know, the people I'm friends with and people who, with whom I have professional relationships, that didn't go away when I left the company. Um I guess for some people, another positive is working with Doug. Um, I never intended to work with Doug. Uh, I don't know him. Um, the, the contact I've had with Channel Awesome Management over the years, and I'm not bashing them because this has been entirely two-way. Like, I haven't sought them out either. Um, has been like I had one conversation with the disembodied voice of Michael Mashad over <laughs> Skype. Uh, I believe I talked to Rob Walker a couple times bringing me in. And I wouldn't know Doug Walker from a ham sandwich. Like we have, <laughs> we have, we have never met. We have never spoken. I'm. Sh I hear some people say he's a really nice guy. Some people say he's awful. I bet the truth is probably somewhere in between. Like he's just a guy with some positive and negative qualities. We all have bad like days. Everyone, yeah, like everyone else on Earth, he's probably just a guy. 
and that's fine. He's he's probably a decent enough guy that I would get along with if I met him at a bar or something. Um, and that's that. Uh, you know, I don't have anything against him either. Um, we just don't know each other, and it wouldn't make any sense for me to be on his show or vice versa. Um, so that was five minutes saying you shouldn't talk about your former employer and then 10 minutes talking about our former employers. <laughs> no, no, none of this is like mean. None of this is, none of this is negative. I'm goofing like on the, you. I know, I know there, there, you know, uh, there's, it just, it wasn't eventually it got to the point where I was like, okay, so now only the only thing the exi- now that all the positives are gone, the only things that exist are the negatives. And one of the negatives is branding and brand awareness is really important uh in business if your brand is thought of as its own thing and its own entity it creates a kind of brand loyalty and um when your thing is just thought of as connected to something else and really just as a subsection of something else there's less of that like um and and at, at some point not every show, because some shows are just huge and they have their own kind of identity, like the cinema snob and uh, atop the fourth wall. But a lot of shows kind of get this reputation as being not, you know, blah, 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 review show too, but being a show on Channel Awesome. And that, like I said, is helpful for initial exposure, but it's bad for branding. And, you know, what's really important for branding getting people to actually pay to watch your show to for people to pay to watch their show your show they have to think of your show as your show or else they're not going to shell out any money and my show uh renegade cut is um it's a pay what you want show you can watch it forever and never pay a dime and that's fine because i assume virtually everyone will do that and that's totally okay but it's also dependent on some people saying i like this show enough to pay a dollar for it and that's cool but if your show is not thought of as your show there's less of that and and it's if this sounds like that's that makes no sense leon i can i can tell you right right now my earnings, my business has gone way up since leaving. And I only left a few months ago. Things are like, it's like night and day. I mean, things were going well for a while, but then it just shot up. When Wait, it's only like, been a couple months? No, not a couple months, a few months. What's the difference? It's been since a- since been, since been, uh, since April. A couple is two. A few <laughs> oh, is... <laughs> okay. I know we're being li- so literal. <laughs> I'm very literal about couple because never mind. I I, I don't want to get into couple. It's, okay. it's 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 like a pe- it's like a pet peeve of mine. But Uh-oh. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that's basically it. I don't have anything against. I don't really have anything against management. Exactly. I've heard some bad things. Um. But it, but and I, and I mean no disrespect to the people who have said it, who are almost certainly true. I've witnessed some of it, but a lot of it is very he said she said stuff. They've never been bad to me personally because we've had mutual disinterest with each other <laughs> over the years, um, and that was that. And I just said, you know what? I, I thought, you know, eventually I just have to pull the trigger on this thing that I've been basically planning for about a year. And just go it on my own and see what my business is like. And my business has been much better since then. Um, that's not true. going to be true for everyone, though. I'm not saying everyone abandoned Chip in case anyone from Channel Awesome is listening. But what I am saying is that there are positives and negatives and, and, and you just have to look at your business. It only that's, works that's if be- you're as good as Renegade Cut Media. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it also helps that um, my show always like fit like a square peg in a round hole at that website. It's mm. it's not entirely, but it's an almost entire it, almost entirely comedy website. And... I've been I've been thinking about this a lot recently because mm-hmm. I had to send in uh, my bar application and like there's yeah. a whole employment thing. And I just know I'm going to get a letter in a couple months being like, we looked into it and like, I don't know if these are real companies. Are you lying? Like, what is internet? What is, how do <laughs> we checked your taxes and it doesn't seem like they paid you. How is right. that? Re- <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, no, I know I'm aware. Yeah. Um, 
but I don't I don't know if that's gonna be a problem. Apparently, Florida has like the highest or one of the highest like ethics requirements. So like any yeah. problems with your bar thing can like be catastrophic. Apparently, my understanding mm-hmm. is, which is funny because yeah. when I think Florida lawyers, I think Jack Thompson. Um, Gosh. Is, is anybody old enough to remember that guy? Uh, you mean I like we're all both of us? To that guy. No, <laughs> I was. It was more of a listener facing question, but I certainly hope that our audience is old enough to remember Jack Thompson. If they're not, then you shouldn't be listening to this. Show. I know that I know <laughs> that some some of our listeners are definitely old enough to remember Jack Thompson. Yeah, one would hope. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I'm not sure. How, I'm not even sure how we got onto this. Uh, like, what was the starting point for me? Yeah, let's talk uh, about important stuff. How much do you guys trim your pubes? <laughs> Johnny, you know exactly how much I do. Oh so no! You don't even have to ask me that. Eject, eject. I don't <laughs> want to be on this. <laughs> do you guys want to answer questions? I have law stuff. I have movie stuff. I have D <clears throat> stuff. I watched a Let's couple see. of movies. Yeah, I'll hear. The, I will hear your movies. Uh, Leon has seen both of them. I know this. Oh, okay. but I watched. I watched them. Uh, I watched some Leon movies too. Oh, what Leon <laughs> movies did you watch? <laughs> you go. You go first. I, I watched. I watched <laughs> The Witch and Anomalisa. I watched nice. The Witch. Oh, look at that. I know. Let's all talk about The Witch. How much did you like on a scale of, of one to great? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, never, I, never, I never rank movies, so yeah. I don't know what to do. Uh, I'll let Johnny go first, but I do have thoughts. It's a very religious movie. Yeah. The, there's stuff. Yep, there's definitely religion in it. Uh-huh. It exists. Um, yeah, yeah, really, really does. Um, I rather enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you cool. know, uh, as a base statement, um, even on just like a technical level, color usage was just like, ooh, through the roof. Loved it. Mm. Loved it. Um, <clears throat> that like sparing kind of like doling out of colors as though like, I don't know, some color dealer standing outside of middle school being like, yo, you want a little red? <laughs> Have a yeah. Have a little red. A, a lot of natural lighting. Yep. 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 Um, but uh, I was very impressed with the uh, with the quality of the dialogue, um, and interested to learn that a lot of the dialogue was actually adapted from text of the time. Um, I, I mean, like the thing is, is that you know, coming from a, a background of of training in stage and stuff like that. That whole subdued, like, Henrik Ibsen style of acting. Henri. Yeah, is just... Henri Ibsen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, is fucking, like, it's my jam, you know? That yeah. scene where, like, somebody walks in and talks about a vase for ten minutes, but they're really talking <laughs> about fucking... Oh my god! I like going in. I knew it was like really critically acclaimed, but then I saw the user reviews on Amazon, and it was getting fucking savaged by like randos. And it's like, yeah, this is kind of a high bri- like highbrow is maybe not the right word. It's the first one that comes to mind. But it's like a it's not a traditional horror movie at all. No, oh, yeah. absolutely not. But that's that's kind of yeah. what I liked about it. I'm you know like I sort of feel like in this day and age we're kind of reliving a like a real renaissance for horror movies. And that mm. that's not to say that like, you know, there still isn't a whole lot of schlock out there because I I can't remember if it was on Word Funk or 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 like um on the BT podcast where we talked about the low the low barrier of entry. Yeah. That, that, and, and a Yahoo can run around in the woods with a bad camera. Yeah, with a bad camera and a wish. like a quart of of corn syrup with red food dye in it, you know? Yep. Like, I mean, the re-release, or not re-release, but uh, the new Blair Witch movie kind of, like, rem- reminds us of that. I'm not saying they didn't work hard on the new Blair Witch movie. I haven't seen it. I don't know anything about it. I heard it was underwhelming, but whatever. But certainly, the the original Blair Witch movie was like, watch us make something scary with, like, $16 and a grilled cheese sandwich. You know? <laughs> Which I, you know, I, I know it costs more than that. Before you well actually me in the comments, <laughs> you're getting real spicy today, John. But I, you know, but but the thing about it is, is that like, you know, after that happened for a long time, almost every horror movie I saw was like, oh look, found footage. Oh look, found footage. Oh look, found footage. Yeah. 
and I got really bored of horror. I was never like I never felt like I was a huge horror fa- uh, horror fan uh, uh, when I was much younger, but mm-hmm. seeing so many people like experiment with uh, smaller budgets and creative premises and movies that almost feel like they're more art film than they are horror, but like the horror is still definitely there. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm, I'm loving. And what grabbed me about The Witch was that it was not necessarily a horror movie insofar that like, hey, watch, we're really going to scare you. But watching, like, watching someone's way of life and a way of life that is, like, completely and utterly, totally foreign to me, um, based on, like, you know, its religious foundations and just the world in which they live. Like, I live as far away from the setting of the witch as you can possibly imagine. You know, right. this isolated, like, little house out in the middle of nowhere that they wrought from the ground up with their bare hands, whereas I'm in, like, a concrete high-rise in a major metropolitan city, never, like more than 30 seconds away from the internet. Um, But, like, watching the lives of these people just kind of get slowly peeled down from, like, the, the, the lies they tell each other, the suspicion that they have for one another, the... Uh, um, you know, like you could even argue to a certain point in time, uh, um, the the murderous plans for one another, mm-hmm. the, the sabotage, the 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 in, to some degree sexual tension, all of these things that run contradictory to the the current, the main current of of what their lives are supposed to stand for. You know, like, it was a stirring experience in in that sense. I wouldn't describe it to people as being a conventional horror movie, but there's certainly, like, a heavy element of fear and of uh, um, stripping away of civility and savagery and all these deep human conditions that make for good horror. It reminds me of kind of the religious horror movie movement of like the 70s with like the Omen and the Exorcist and the um, shit. What was the guy who made? I want to say Argento. Some of the stuff he made. And then like kind of the modern day, more psychological horror stuff like the Babadook or It Follows. And it's like a really satisfying fusion Mm -hmm. of those two sensibilities for me. Yeah. But I definitely Mm -hmm. see how like (laughs) if you don't go into this like with a pretty – solid basis of understanding of christianity i bet it's just gonna sound like gibberish (laughs) (laughs) like you kind of have to know what these people believe for any of it to mean anything and which is fine for me but like it's about stuff in a very real way it also it also banks i think on a decent like level of literacy yeah because they don't talk like us (laughs) it's yeah it's like some it's some uh, smart and stuff it's some House of Seven Gables <laughs> shit. Um, but yeah, it's a good movie. It, I just wouldn't go into it expecting uh, like jump scares and that kind of stuff. It's really about like it's a it's a psychodrama. It's a slow burn. Happen. Yeah, I will I will say just uh, real quick. I I've, I I made my my thoughts about what I thought it was about uh, and all that stuff before, but I didn't really talk about like cool scare moments. And I I know you guys are saying like it's not that kind of horror movie, but I will say. Um, the scene where we suddenly cut to, uh, the bird, um, pecking oh, yeah. at the woman that like everyone in the theater, I went and saw it with like six other people who do roughly what I do on the internet. <laughs> and we were all like, Oh, okay. All right. So we were, we were building to like, I mean, there, there were very few like scare scares before that, but then that just happened. And it was like, because we hadn't seen tons of like jumps before that, it just hit us like that much more. I was very, yeah. I was very unsettled by the scene where Caleb finds the uh, the shack. Yeah, there's it's very uncomfortable yeah. and there's strong imagery, yeah. which I don't think is the same yeah. thing as like traditional scares. No, but lots of dread, was, uh, lots of lots of kind yeah. of like lingering, twisting in the stomach. 
it's a uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in, but good mm. movie. Yeah. Um, Great. What was the other Leon movie you saw? Anomalisa. Oh, I haven't seen that. That's yet. Uh, that's Charlie Kaufman's latest effort. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I I thought you know I guess I won't talk too much about it because like you should probably see it, Austin, and it's something to be seen, like as opposed to paraphrased. I got into a conversation with somebody at work, uh, I I think today, it might have been yesterday, about the movie, and I sort of found myself at a loss to describe exactly what it was about. Because it's, it is such an audio-visual presentation, in, in such a like strangely mundane way. Um, but I, I found myself impressed with how incredible uh, a presentation of depression mm-hmm. it it portrayed like i thought i had you nailed leon when i was like haha i know what movie i'm going to make him do it's such a beautiful day <laughs> you know it, that's like that's a really important movie to me i mean it's there yeah. there are some you know light moments in it but by and large it's a very bleak kind of portrait of what it's like to not only live, you know, depressed, but also with, uh, um, with illness. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I saw Anomalisa and I was like, oh, wow. Oh, like there's this, there's this undercurrent of, it's, it's weird because it's portrayed so well. I, you know, I don't want to say that it was a flavorless movie, but it was like a really great movie about like flavorless life, a life having no, I don't know, you know, like a life having no, no highlight about it having no joy or even yeah. despair, you know, like there, there's no, it it exists. It 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 fabulously portrays this in between space, where you can't even get excited about how terrible things are. You know, you can't even get overworked about how awful it is right now. Uh, but nor can you be delighted about how everything's just coming up Millhouse. And and it it doesn't overplay it. It did not overplay its hand. You know, like it at no point in time did I ever feel like, okay, this is this is getting kind of old. You know, it seemed to be a perfect length. It was like a ninety three minute movie or something like that. And just mm. it it did not gut me emotionally, but at the end of it I, I sort of I couldn't shake it. Yeah. I you know, for for the last four days or so, because I, I like I'm pretty sure I watched it on it was either Friday night or Saturday I watched it. The last four days, I just I have not been able to put it behind me. Yeah. It uh it definitely sticks with you, especially if uh in any way you re- you can relate to the protagonist. Mm. And also but not also but the problem, not not the problem. the uh, The thing about relating to the protagonist in, in this way, it's not like, oh, I identify with that person more as it is, oh, God, I identify with that person. Yeah, don't I? yeah. yeah. There's so. there was by identifying with the main character, I also sort of felt like I had to acknowledge a certain uh, amount of guilt and sort of shame hmm. about my own life. At the same time, you know, sort of feeling like I didn't do this to myself, but I'm kind of responsible for some of it, at least. It, yeah, it was, um, it was, it was a, uh, it, it was an important movie for me to see. I, w- I definitely recommend you you check it out, Austin. It's, uh, it's a very clever piece of filmmaking, but like most of Charlie Kaufman's movies are, so. Mm. Yeah, I just I'm waiting for it to come to streaming. So I I, I saw it on Netflix. I don't know if it's in in on American Netflix yet. 
I could check. Uh, I know Zootopia just got added to Netflix, so I watched that yeah. for the first yeah, time. Yeah, that's that's on my cool. list of, of things to do. See, now that I've I've stopped watching X Files, <laughs> I have like yeah. I have these moments now where I'm like, oh, I can sit down and watch a few episodes of JoJo, or you know, if I'm puttering around in the kitchen, I'm like, oh, I should put something with English on it. Mm. I'm making good progress in JoJo, by the way. Nice. I'm. Uh, I'm I like I've kind of like we've reached the point in time now about like five or six episodes into uh, um, uh, Stardust Crusaders. I'm like, wow, every single one of these episodes is the same. They they <laughs> arrive at a new stage in the journey and then a, a, like a new stand shows up mm-hmm. and then they beat them. And then, you know, there are some wacky interchanges in between. Uh, uh I particularly enjoyed the cherry scenes. Yep, raro raro. <laughs> there's um, there's some things that happen along the way, but yeah, Stardust Crusaders has, in hindsight, kind of been maligned as the the most formulaic and mm. boring one. But like at the time, it was like mind blowing because of just like all that stand shit was super novel. But yeah, since yeah. It's been r- ripped off a million times. Yeah, it does feel I've, very. Just I've like, kind this of this is how shonen are. I've kind of reached the point in time though where they're starting to get like you know unusual. Uh, Actually, the the mangaka has said like there came a point where he couldn't top like the normal powers. Like, oh, I shoot fire, I shoot like emeralds or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, well, I have to get start getting weird with it. Mm-hmm. And then it, part four, especially, is like, like I burden you with emotions or something, or like I <laughs> there's like a bunch of like really weird ones. I'm looking, he, like, I'm looking forward out to of that. regular stuff. You know, like I mean, I've I'm past the boat. I've seen the. Um... Um, I, I can't remember if it was the the Empress, the one that the one that gets into uh, Joseph. Oh yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember what other ones. You know, but but I'm sort of like, okay, all right, this is getting creative at least. I can kind of appreciate that. But uh, I think once once the Darby brothers show up near the end of Stardust, that's when it's like, oh, I see like what the potential of this is, because their power is like to play games with people. And if they win, like stuff happens. So it's like they play video games or card games. And that's like when it starts getting like, oh, we're just not going to fight every week. So that's pretty cool. OK, and it just it gets crazy. I'm, I'm looking to, forward like, to yeah. that. But I mean, so I'm getting I'm getting more Jojo in. I'm getting movies in now and things like that. So I'm sort of feeling like, ah. Although this weekend is probably going to be all about Luke Cage. Oh yeah, shit that comes out Friday. Yeah, all about nice. Luke Cage. Yeah, definitely. Just so we're clear, that. like next Wednesday is going to be Luke Cage. Nice. I watched one more uh, Leon movie. Did, and for, did you want to say listening. anything about Zootopia or? Oh, it's well, it's a perfectly fine film. Like it's a little heavy-handed, <laughs> but that's something worth being heavy-handed about. It's like pretty it's yeah. like the twist was super obvious but it's a kids movie whatever like yeah i don't have any like strong feelings about it it's perfectly fine um all right what other what other that, leon that movie did you watch then <laughs> for the record leon movies are like movies with some depth and stuff to talk about i don't know okay. if there's anything more specific about that we keep saying that like it means something <laughs> Um, I assumed you meant stuff I have talked about on my show, but okay, that also works. I so. mean, that's well, so far what uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we. Uh, what What is the other Leon movie that you've seen? Well, that and that's why I, I don't know if that if stuff you've done is the right category, but I, you <laughs> literally just tweeted about it because it's the next episode, apparently. It's oh, a, Sicario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm working on that right now. I'm um, counting that as a Leon movie, even though you haven't released an episode on it yet, but you will shortly. That was pretty good. <laughs> good yeah I'm, I'm glad you liked it i i yeah. don't know what i was expecting going in i thought i was i was kind of thinking of something like narcos have you guys watched narcos have we talked about that on here i have not no not yet it, it's a historical netflix show most of the dialogue is in spanish i like it a lot the performances are really strong uh in that show and i was kind of expecting that almost like a scarface or a good fellas or something like that sicario is not that it's like weird police procedural for like 75 percent of it and then the end does something entirely different and there's like mm. one horror sequence and then there's a like a bar cruising sequence <laughs> like it's it's a very uh i'm uh, strange isn't the right word it's like a um hmm it's, it's a lot of it's a it's polymath a movie 
<laughs> it does a lot of things, and it does it really well, each of them. Oh, gosh. I, I enjoyed it. I, I'm still kind of sorting through my feelings on it because it, it is such a like unusual entry in kind of the crime genre or like the police procedural genre, and it comes at it from a bunch of different angles. What other movies has that guy made? The director, I guess? I don't oh, know. God. Oh, oh huh. um, Prisoners. Enemy, Prisoners. Uh, Incendies. Um, yeah, like it, uh, he's making the he's making Blade Runner. 2. Yeah, he's doing Blade Runner too. Although I read the other week, and this is like fucking fantastic. I heard that someone was oh. like, "Hey, you know, Mr. Villeneuve, what what would be like your dream project?" And he was like, "Dune. I want to do Dune. Somebody give me Dune." <laughs> oh, I was like, "Motherfucker! If you gave Denise Villeneuve Dune, I would like cream other people's pants." <laughs> All right, I've never seen Prisoners or Enemy, which are the other two movies he did that are famous, apparently. They're also Leon movies, technically. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> literally, I looked them up, and I was like, oh, yeah, Leon did videos on those, and I haven't watched them because I haven't seen those movies. But uh, He's hmm. also got um, – there's one coming out called The Arrival, or Arri- yeah, Arrival, yeah. I think it's just called. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that. The, uh, the poster looks like the uh, Show Me What You Got yeah. from um... – <laughs> Show me what you got. <laughs> it's amazing that – I mean, it's like, how do they not know? You know what? I bet they did know, and they just went with it. Probably. Um, <laughs> so, Probably. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'll see that for sure. I want to see what he's got. I do. <laughs> uh, but So you haven't seen those, but does that mean you've seen Incendies? Nope. Okay. Okay. I'm planning That's on seeing Enemy and Prisoners eventually, but uh, so as far as that guy's – body of work goes sicario is a good start for me but as Mm -hmm. much as the filmmaking impressed me i was just mostly left with like why isn't emily blunt in more stuff like she is super she's good i want her to just be in more movies all the time please yeah (laughs) i think probably because of sicario she's going to be yeah probably nice she's cool um so that's that's movies that's what's happening in there um you guys, you guys should watch Narcos too. But. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on it. I've just kind of taken a break right now from starting other TV series because mm. I want to finish JoJo. I do, mm. or at least catch up to JoJo because they're still releasing episodes for Stardust Crusaders, right? Oh, no, Stardust Crusaders is over. They're on the next part. Uh, Diamond is unbreakable. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And the ending theme for that season is Savage Garden, uh, which I didn't know was a band until you told me, and when I heard it, I was like. <laughs> Holy shit, time is a flat circle. <laughs> and, and, like, uh, do you agree with me, though, that, like, there's no band in the history of the universe whose name is more undeserved than <laughs> Savage Garden? It's a strong contender. I can't think of anything more uh, <laughs> in that vein, but yeah. Um, so, you guys want to talk about other stuff? I got questions. What do you want to do? Um,. I've sort of been trying to like build up to talking about this, but it's like hard. Um, but I'm just going to anyway because uh, I'm really angry. Um, oh, is this is this what you did before we started the show? Yeah. Yep. Um, apparently, uh, my relatives have been conspiring to try to find me, and uh, uh, one of them, the the worst one, the one that ruined everything, uh, actually did. Like re- like reversed doxed me, or or whatever you want to call it, and left something in my mailbox with no return address, no signed name, but left an indication who it was, and typed so that she had deniability. Um. Uh, this relative has been stalking me for years, in spite of frequent demands for her to stop. Uh, so oh, oh, on the off chance that you're listening, because apparently that is something that is possible. Uh, don't ever try to contact me again or I'm calling the police and filing a no contact order. Uh, I looked at the law and I apparently have grounds under stalking because if someone, uh, anyone, but especially someone who is provably known to me, uh, like a relative, uh, is doing this after being told to stop, it qualifies, uh, especially, uh, considering this has been going on for years. And uh, that's one of the prerequisites for getting a no contact order. Uh, I've only held off doing it for this long to spare some other people who I, I don't know anymore, but who have never done me any wrong. Uh, I, did, I wanted to spare them the grief, but that's not an issue anymore because of other shit that has come to light. Uh, I'm not sure if I have anything more to say. 
yeah, uh, you ruined your chance of ever stepping foot in the same room as me again. Uh, but you also did now ruined my grandparents' chance of ever seeing me again due to the implications of that that, that would bring. Uh, or my siblings, my father, or everyone that I ever knew until I became an adult. Uh, I can't speak to any of them ever again for reasons. Uh, not even at funerals, which is the thing that I always promised I would come back for just in case. Because uh, you're a fucking monster and nobody can be trusted now. I have to go change my phone number again. Uh, I have to cancel some old accounts. I'm getting a new car, but that was something I wanted to do eventually. And I'm moving again soon, which was inevitable. But that that's definitely going to happen now. Uh, yeah, I had my life in order. Uh, I own and operate my own business and make a pretty good living doing it. I mean, not like PewDiePie good, but definitely, but definitely good. Uh, I have people I love and who love me in return. And someone is basically threatening to destroy the peace I found for myself. Uh, so, wow, fuck you. Uh, really. Um, why are they after your lucky charms so hard? It's just the worst. So uh, it's time to move on again, um, you know, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. I just wanted I to thought, just I, peel off that bandaid. I thought it was. I thought it was just like the way the way you had worded it. I thought it was just like mm-hmm. a, a rando creep. No, no, rando <clears throat> creeps. Oh, I deal with rando creeps on a more frequent basis. I'm okay. I'm almost okay with that. That I mean, I you know you've you've spoken to us some about your family. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's out of line. I'm sorry you're going through that. Yeah, there was some. I I don't want to say what it said, but there was some w- weird shit in it that I didn't appreciate. Anyway, um, that is what's up. Um, yeah, just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, uh, not so much open the wound, but like rip off the band aid. Um, done. Bandages need to be when, changed. They they really do. Oh, oh, did I mention it? completely unrelated uh, to any of this? Um, this this is almost like harmless by comparison. I had to go to the emergency room the other day. Um, I'm I'm like laughing about it now because this seems by comparison like a walk in the park <laughs> compared to the shit I was I had to deal with today. Um, remember when I said I I thought I might have accidentally poisoned myself? Yes. Uh, last week, I I did not, but uh, I woke up the next day feeling much much worse, and I was like, oh, maybe this isn't a- gone yet. Maybe I really did accidentally poison myself. I should probably go to the ER. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is I waste a day over nothing. But you know, uh, you know, if, if I do go, the worst thing that can happen if I stay home is I die. So I figured like that seems like a good trade. So I just went to the ER, and uh, they were very nice. Um, Due to, you know, the fact that I was, you know, uh, had a concern but was not, like, bleeding out of my head or anything, I had to wait quite a long time uh, to go back to to see a doctor. But, you know, I, I, I don't like to complain about that kind of thing. They're all just – they're all, you know, doing their best um, under very difficult conditions. Triage, you know, man. Can, yeah. Yeah, it's just triage. Yeah, that's all there is to it. Um, it. Plus, it's also just the American healthcare system. It's not the super best, and that's all there is to it. Um People go to the ER um, rather than get, like, a specialist to talk to because you can get into the ER, like, right away. Um, That's, like, um, I just had to go. And uh, the doctor, we did, like, blood samples and stuff. And um, the the good news is I am not poisoned at all. The the bad news is um, that I have an – or had an upper respiratory infection, which is why I was feeling bad inside of my body. But – um, it was not anything ser- too serious. It just, it was just didn't feel good and I had to have it checked out. And, uh, the symptoms actually could be dealt with, with over the counter drugs rather than anything, uh, too heavy. And that was good. And they gave me fluids and, uh, they discharged me and they were all very nice about what it. What kind of, what kind um, of fluids you... did they give you? This is, sorry, I, I it's just a, I... like, it's a personal interest of mine. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Um, I didn't ask exactly. It was clear. And they put it, they had a bag. They, they hooked up thing into my arm and I have really good veins. So they were able to get it in real quick. Did you, did you, you get to take some that. home? I, I, no, <laughs> I didn't. I, I just, they emptied the bag into me. <laughs> they emptied the bag into me. Uh, there's no harm and, in asking. Uh, no, it's fine. Um, <laughs> Johnny just, wants to know about your fluids. I'm just a fan of fluids. Okay. <laughs> that's, I'm that's big on really fluids. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, you Johnny, your email is fluidfan420, so that's like the first thing I knew about you. 
It's out there. I mean, I don't know if you guys think I've been trying to keep this a secret all these years, but oh gosh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, but no, they they discharged me, and uh, I came home. Um, my only complaint about coming home is a uh, local uh, electric company said uh, they're they were testing something, so I should have my, you know, they I shouldn't, um, I should expect to not have electricity in the evening. So I like, oh, I probably shouldn't turn my computer on. So I just like watch Netflix on my in the dark. Uh, on my phone, but it turns out they just didn't do it, so I could have been, you know, having lights on and not crouched in a, in a corner watching the X Files. Um, crouched in a corner? Why weren't you like in bed or something? Well, I was in bed. I just I'm 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 being hyperbolic a little. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was in fact in bed. On um, that note, Leon, famous. why are you watching TV in bed? Don't you know that that disrupts sleep schedule? Look. <laughs> Really? Does it? I, I like this is. I have been told. All right. Okay. okay. I, I because and last last year I I went for a number of weeks to see a psychologist, and one of the problems we addressed was um, my sleeping habits, because um, if if you think that getting like decades of practice at sleeping means that at some point in time you can go pro, you are wrong. Um, bad sleeping habits have a tendency to persist. And I was like, listen, Doc, I don't know what I can do. And he gave me this, like, checklist of things that it was like, okay, you know, if you can follow these and make sure that, like, if if none of this helps your ability to get and get to and stay asleep, then we have to, like, kick things up a notch. And there were things like, um, make sure that you have, like, a routine every night. Uh, so that, you know, physically you kind of like condition your body to wind down and go, oh, okay, it's sleep time. So he was like, so I like read for 20 minutes and then I brushed my teeth and floss and then I had a hot shower and then I would climb into bed, you know? So that would be like where the body would like key down and be like, oh, hey, it's almost time for sleep. And one of the things that, that, that I was told was that like, try not to do anything in bed except sleep and sexy time. Um, okay. he was like, you know, this even goes so far as that if you are like lying in bed for longer than half an hour and you can't get to sleep, don't stay there, get up. You know, if you're going to read, he said, don't read in bed, read in the other room for like 30 minutes, then go back to bed and try and sleep again. He was like, don't watch TV in bed. Don't do it. It was even like, don't watch before you go to bed. Don't like watch mysteries or anything like that. Don't watch anything that's going to get your brain up and going. Don't watch horror. Don't watch like, you can watch like, you know, stuff that you don't need to think about. Action movies, comedy, stuff, you know, those things. You know, other other stuff too that was like, uh, make a list of things that you have to do tomorrow. But like, make sure that you have solutions for them all. So if it's like, if you're freaked out because you're like, oh my god, I have to get to the bank, but I don't know when I'm going to get to the bank, then sit down before you go to bed and go, okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to take my lunch break at this point in time during the day. I'm going to drive to the bank. I'm going to do that. You know, if if I need to eat, then I can eat then. So that you have like, anything that's going to happen tomorrow, you have like a plan so that if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, <gasps> when am I going to uh, grease the donkey? You're like, oh, wait. <laughs> It's on the it's on the itinerary. I'm gonna grease the donkey at two, you know, when okay. I have to like uh, practice with the bear, um, the tango. Okay. Um, wow. So yeah, all these things. So I was told don't don't watch TV in bed. Don't do things in bed okay. unless it's like sleep or um, snuggle based. See, see, here's the thing. I do everything in bed, so I feel like my I feel like my body is like this is. This is your natural state. Hey, so hey I, if you I, if you have no sleep problems, then like that's that's not a big right. deal, right? This was this right. was me saying, listen, I I can't sleep. What's going on? And the doctor right. saying, okay, well, you know, traditionally these are ways to condition your yourself into recognizing that when you're in bed, your body's like, ah, oh, fuck, it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> Which I imagine is what my body sounds like. <laughs> I would like to think so. Every time um, I get out of bed, it feels like a terrible mistake. Okay. Like I make Renegade cut in bed. Like oh, everything God. you see on everything you, you see on the show. Do you is sleep a okay? 
Yes, I oh I sleep very well. Oh, um, goals. Hashtag goals. Don't you just want to slap <laughs> I, him, Austin? I watch TV. Uh, you know, do you do um, computer related anything computer related? I'm doing in bed. Like I just I like like let me explain what my my. <laughs> do you have like, like? Do you have no conscience? Are you like a secret sociopath or something? <laughs> you just my like you're in bed. And you're like do 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 do. Time to go to bed. That's what I imagine yes. your body sounds like. <laughs> it does. My desktop is my desktop is on the floor, um, and I basically lie in bed and my uh, key. I stretch my keyboard and my mouse into bed, and I, you know, I. It's it's basically like you know how some people have like an office chair for when they're you know on their computer. I'm just in bed. Um, oh, God. <laughs> it's great. You know, Leon. Um, I, it's I don't want to like flog you through the streets. <laughs> Because that's not the kind of person I am, but I kind of want to flog you through the streets. Okay, that's fine. I eat in bed too. Like, lit, like I can't. Oh even my imagine. god! What what do I do that's not in bed? I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, I guess I have to leave sometimes and put on pants. I'm so um, jealous. This is everything I want my life to be. Like, like while we're on the subject of like how you're like your natural state, how often are you guys naked? Because I'm. <laughs> Because I'm naked. Wait, if I'm in my home, like pretty much all. The oh time. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm no. with you right there. I, I <laughs> okay. well, Austin has roommates, so yeah, that's different. Correct. I I cohabit. Uh, even when I, but... even, yeah, I would say even when I lived with a girlfriend or mm-hmm. alone briefly, like I'm just not a. I, I'm not very nude. Okay. I'm so nude. I'm... Yeah. yeah. So basically, what I'm trying to tell uh, my audience, who have known me for many many years now, and she probably have put all this together uh, at this point i am naked and in bed like most of my life so every <laughs> renegade cut episode that you've ever listened to everybody leon's just like flapping in the breeze yeah I'm, this is the channel I'm... of a nude man <laughs> <laughs> hey sometimes he appears on camera with a shirt on that's true, but oh, I should probably mention <laughs> that oftentimes when I am appearing on camera with my shirt on, it's just I shirt. am wearing. It is. Yeah. I oh wait, I had to once because there was one scene where I was on the floor and I had to stand up and walk away. But besides that, I this... did not, and I had to. <sighs> when it gets much. when it gets to winter time, I will often uh, I will often do word funk with my dressing gown on, which is okay. like fuzzy and thick and luscious and. Like I have, I it it is better than some of the blankets that I have. Okay. Um, I'm wearing I'm wearing underwear right now, but that's only because see where in order to get my microphone to be steady, I have to put it on a chair, which is not on my bed. So I'm actually sitting on the floor right next to my bed, and my rug is like it's not hard, but it's coarse enough that I don't want to put my bare butt on it. Oh, I wish I could unknow all of this. <laughs> I'm I'm so. I'm naked too, Austin. I'm like okay, good. <laughs> see, I feel like we've joked about this before. Like, haha, I'm not wearing pants. But like, no, you guys are like actually free balling, which is a lot. Yeah, yeah. How do you reckon all the time? I mean, Leon, how do you reconcile that with like your body issues? Because I am like <laughs> uncomfortable with Look, my, my physical presence, and therefore try to hide my shame. And you're just like, I hate my body. Hey, everybody, look at my dick. <laughs> no, no, no. No one should ever look at it. <laughs> okay. But n- no one should ever look at it. But I have just accepted the fact that this is kind of what I look like, and I'm still more comfortable, you know, than being, you know, clothed. And plus, plus, also, it's been summer for a few months, and it's hot. I mean, in the winter, you know, obviously I'm wearing clothes. Okay, but this like... is too much. Can we not anymore? Do you guys, <laughs> do you guys want to move on? Sure. Look, Austin, are there any it, are there it... any questions about my dick? <laughs> Austin, you're yeah. like you're like five years too late to start being embarrassed by our friendship. So yeah. let's let's just let's just get over that. There's okay. there's my... gonna Austin. There's gonna come a point in time, quite literally, mm-hmm. where you come home from. You know, your internship internship at the law firm or like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, you will have just been to the law bar where everybody just like bombs drinks and you're like, oh, God, I just I can't even have like you're going to feel the world cling to your clothes. <laughs> and there's there's going to be a moment where in self-recognition, you're like, all I have to do is just take this off and it'll just be me. I'll be in my own space and I can I can leave it all behind. 
and that suit will come flying off you so fast, and you'll just be like, how did I make it so long? How did I, how did I survive so long being clothed? I'd like to think of Austin as like wearing one of those um, tearaway tuxedos that people wear at stripper bars, and he just walks in and is like, I'm done, and then just rips it. I'm like, ah, so much better. Yeah, absolutely. With those like huge pipes I hear he has. God. What's okay. happening? Um, what, was that? what was that last part? Oh, uh, just like, I mean, you were a football player. I imagine you've got some pretty impressive arms. Nah, not really. Not anymore. I haven't I haven't like, gone to a gym regularly in a long time. Yeah, I know, but like there's got to be some genetic component to it. <laughs> That's just racist. <laughs> Didn't you watch Zootopia? <laughs> oh god. It's an important um, movie. Yeah, it is. Um you guys want to do uh questions? We're almost an hour in. Sure, let's do and, some uh, questions. We've we've b- borne our souls and flesh uh on a couple different segments so i mean let's do it yeah this is a weirdly like chill serious episode uh if, yeah if you come for like the dick goofs like sorry that it took an hour to get here now we're in it yeah um sometimes there are dicks a lot of times uh yeah. frequently uh i was dicks, i always like to think of them as sub dicks <sighs> where they're there mean? just you know not necessarily occupying the surface space no nope <laughs> Stop. Uh, Martin asks, why did Leon keep bringing up teddy bo- teddy bears when talking about jacking off? Is that something specific, or is that just a... It, it was a joke. Okay. Was, I, people a joke. are just curious if there's something you're trying to like hint at, but you're not ready to talk about yet? No, no. Okay. I, I, I might... I, I have, like... <laughs> we'll get, it's it's yeah. so weird. Here's a question. It's... A, um, it's it's so weird. Yeah. Um, but no, I don't have. I don't have. I don't have a. Um, I don't have any fetishes. But that's not like like I'm not above it. I just like, eh. Sex is like a thing that I, that happens to me sometimes, <laughs> um, and I don't. And I don't. I don't like hate it. But it's not. It, it's it I, happens I have very, to you, I, like the weather. Right, I have very little sex drive, so it's just not. It's not interesting. Is what I'm trying to say. Related question from Esther, okay. who asks: Are you asexual if you masturbate? <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> um. Gosh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um. Is it look? Is I, asexuality I, the lack of desire in totally or? Actually, I, I I've looked into it as it, it, it. I I was curious about whether or not I wanted to call myself. I don't. Uh, if only because I don't like to call myself any anything. Um, not not in like not in like a new agey. I don't believe in labels kind of way, but in a I just I just not comfortable. I'm probably closer to that than average. But I I when people ask me about my sexuality, I'm like I don't know. I like date women, I guess, um, and that's kind of true. I bet there's um, a spectrum of asexuality, right? There From... actually is. That that's what I was gonna say. Oh, okay. There's a, a, oddly enough, even though it sounds like it's a zero kind of thing, um, there is a spectrum of it. Like you can be asexual and also aromantic, meaning you're just not interested in relationships at all. You can be asexual and you know have romantic feelings for people. Um, you can be. You can you can some people call themselves asexual, even though they will occasionally enjoy sex. Uh, or occasionally want to have sex, or have, or like it in an intimate kind of way more than in a Physical. force of nature kind of way. Um, that's kind of where I am, but I don't call myself asexual because I don't think it's is entirely accurate for me. Um, since I don't know, it just it, 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 how do I put this? You can't choose your sexuality, but you can choose the words you can use to define it. Um, and I, I don't, I don't really have many good words for it, but I don't call myself that, but mostly just because I don't really call myself anything. If pressed, I would say straight, but it also just doesn't sound right either. Um, hetero casual, hetero casual. What was, yeah, what was, <laughs> the, que- what was the question? There was like, sorry. can you, two, can yes, you be asexual and still jerk it or rub it yeah or... because, because you, i mean yeah because it, it mean it can it means different things to different people and that's not necessarily meaning that it's wrong just do whatever you want and as long as you're not <laughs> bothering anyone else and call yeah, it whatever some, you want some people are like not interested in having sex with other people but will be interested enough in just maintaining their body enough to occasionally masturbate and that they can still call themselves asexual because it, it, it still kind of fits Who's yeah gonna stop you might you might crave <laughs> you know like the chemical release the endorphins yeah. and things like that but not necessarily be like 
whoa, you're really hot. <laughs> now, yeah. it, suddenly the <laughs> orgasm police, everyone on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> What's your identification? What's I don't all this, is... this then? <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Um, yeah, there's no yeah, transition anyway. away from this question, so I'm just gonna. There just, really isn't. We just, just, just bold another one right through it. Whatever. Jason D. Hall asks, "Have you ever read the Dresden Files?" I, I have not. Hmm. I have read the Dresden Files role-playing source book. <laughs> Just oh. that? Nothing else of that series? Nothing else. Like, none of it. <laughs> I watched one episode of the television adaptation and then stopped. Because I didn't think it was very good. And that was it. I mean, it might have been, like, later on. But you know me. I gave a show one episode. Mm. That's it. That's <laughs> all I got. I've always kind of awesome. wanted to. But uh-huh. read the, book, read the books, I, I mean. Yeah, I've, I've heard stuff about it, but I've never gotten around to it. Uh, this is a Johnny-specific question from Uh-oh. Athos. Favorite okay. Discworld novel? Ooh, Mort. I'll take your word for it. I want to. I, I want to say Mort. Mort is. Um, Mort's the first one that jumps to mind. I really have a soft spot for the first three. Uh, you know, like the color of magic. Like one of the things I really love about Terry Pratchett is is that he sets up his world so well that you can just kind of like pick up a Discworld book and be like, hey, you know, you're in. Um, because he, he does a reasonably good job of actually, um, setting the stage every single time you, um, uh, you, you read the books. Um, but, so yeah, I've got like, I have a really, really, uh, soft spot for, um, the, the first three books, uh, The Color of Magic, um, Ooh, um, the light, fantastic, and equal rights. I think they are. Um, Mort is just like a super fanciful book for me, though. Mort is like uh, about like death taking an apprentice. Um, Eric is really good, as well. Eric's a good one. Eric is really short, though. Um, Eric is Eric is sort of like a. Do you guys do you guys know the Discworld books? Do you know what the Discworld books are? I know that they were written by Terry Pratchett, and that there are many of them. Yes, and that due due to due to the girth of 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 how, of how many there are, it's something I fear I will just never get into. Yeah, because I the way I like just I I got through one and a half Harry Potter books before I was like. There, I've I've done so. Much oh, they're they're much them. they're much a smaller and b way more palatable than the Harry Potter books. Um, the best way I can describe them to you is basically it's they're like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy of Fantasy. Okay. Where if Hitchhiker's Guide is a sort of fanciful, satirical, tongue in cheek kind of snarky look at science fiction, um, then the Discworld books are basically the same of uh, of, of of fantasy literature. Um, mm. so, like, Eric is basically a retelling of Faust, more or okay. less, but, but like, in this, this really kind of, like, off world, um, Moving Pictures is also really good, um, those are the only ones that I can think of that, like, jump to mind immediately. Uh, they're also, like, probably, you know, like, most of the first, like, ten Discworld books I've read read even i haven't read pardon me all of them i think i've only read about 13 or 14 we also got a related question from anna street i believe yeah it's like a completely different person who asked what's your favorite Discworld character do you just have a reputation as the Discworld guy I, I i don't know i like i tend not to talk about it because it seems to me that like Discworld is this thing where it's like if you're in the know you're in the know um but i have in in the past you know one of the i talked about um, when I designed Drop, um, uh, Drop Goodwood, that is, I, I, I partly used a character in one of the Discworld books called Moving Pictures as a, um, uh, as a template for him. There's a character in Moving Pictures named Victor. Uh, Moving Pictures is this, like, weird kind of, like, occult look at, at the beginning of Hollywood, of where, you know, they, they discover this, like, basically movie machine thing 
that uh, hypnotizes people and kind of like makes them dumber and sucks the intelligence out of them and things like that, right? Um, and and Victor is this guy who I think at the beginning is like in school or something, and he's described as being quite handsome and extremely fit and just like all around quite sexy, but he doesn't really give a rat's ass. Um, like one of the reasons why he's so fit, there's a big paragraph in the game where they explain that he's so fit because he's incredibly lazy. In fact, he's like the laziest man alive. And it's like, and reader, you know, you might be thinking, well, if he's the laziest man alive, why does he exercise? Wouldn't somebody who doesn't exercise be more lazy? It's like, no, you don't understand how lazy Victor is. Victor exercises so that everything else that he has to do in his life is way easier to do. Like, that's the only reason why he exercises. So that, like, he can walk somewhere and not be exhausted. Because he hates putting effort into things that much. Someone needs to run those numbers. I don't know how if that's how efficiency works, but... Uh, it's, you know... I do believe that's the joke. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, so it's um, <laughs> it's it, Victor. Victor is certainly one of my one of my favorites. Um, death as well, like Terry Pratchett's depiction of of death is just golden. And um, uh, Rincewind as well. I mean, there's something really special about about Rincewind's character. I I don't know if you guys know Eddie Izzard. Um, certainly, I'm sure you're familiar yeah. with him as an actor, but I, I don't know if you've ever had the pl- pleasure of, of seeing any of his stand-up. I, I have. But, yeah. sorry, Austin? Uh, yes, uh, of course. It's, why do they keep calling it women's clothing? I bought them. They're my clothes. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I had the actual, I had an opportunity to see Eddie Izzard live when he was traveling uh, on his Circle tour. Uh, back in the day. I've actually seen him a couple of times, but I think it was on Circle where he did a bit where he was talking about um, cowardly, kind of upbeat characters. Characters that were, like, kind of funny, but were always interested in, like, saving their own skin. He was talking about Scooby-Doo and things like that, you know, where he was, like, you know, Shaggy and Scooby are always sort of, like, you can laughing, they're upbeat, they're, like, doing their own thing, but then when danger presents, like, Shaggy and Scooby are out the door, like, fast as possible. And he was like, uh, you know, I, I couldn't, he's like, I, there, we don't have that many characters like that in literature. Um, he was, uh, he was calling out, he was like, could you, can you remember, can you remember, do you know any characters that, that are like this? And, and, uh, somebody apparently in one of his shows mentioned Falstaff from like Henry V, you know, but, but. He was talking about how the important part of these characters is that, like, yeah, they're 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 sort of like they're there, they're having a good time, you know, they're trying to have a laugh, they're trying to enjoy themselves, they're trying to enjoy life, but at the same time, they are they're cowards. They they don't want to face danger, and there's something really relatable about that. And Rincewind in Discworld is kind of like that as well, where he's this he's this wizard. Finger quotes. Um, who's never been particularly good at his craft, who during the course of all his adventures in Discworld gets, like, supremely powerful and then, like, not very powerful at all. But he's always just kind of, like, looking after his own skin, but not at a cost to the safety of others. So Rincewind is, like, he's a... He's a relatable... He's a very human character. But, um, but yeah, I, I like, definitely... I, Victor makes me laugh in moving pictures, and death. Death always makes me laugh. There we go. There's an episode title. Death always makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Done. It's got to be. All right. Uh, let's see here. We got bo- both Pruitt Holcomb and Dawn, Demented Dawn on Twitter, asked if we have any problematic faves. Oh, guys tons. Like the first thing that comes to mind is Sin City, which we talked about recently. I, I might have to think on to find something else. But what about you guys? Um, basically, how do I put this? Gun culture like creeps me out, like, and the glorification thereof uh, is also like bothersome to me. Um, not just like in general, but like in media, because that's where that's where people are watching everyone get shot up, and it's all it looks so cool. Um, but at the same time, I just really love Predator and Commando, and like. The, any anything i mean those like 80s and 90s like guns are everywhere and everything super cool action bullshit <laughs> i i like all that i like all yeah. that and it's 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 like i'm watching john wick 
and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Man, I wish there weren't so many guns, but, but god, <laughs> yeah. damn, god damn it, this is good. That's and that's, that's all... also applicable to, like, shooter video games, which I, I enjoy yeah. a lot of those as well, but you mm-hmm. do have to, like, there's <laughs> there's something to be said for games like Call of Duty being considered non-political. Like, it's it's mm-hmm. political if you put a woman in your video game, but if you gun down <laughs> 4,000 dudes, like, that's fine. That's neutral. Oh, gosh. Um, but yeah, like, stuff like that. Like, um watching movies that not necessarily espouse bad worldviews like watching the atlas shrugged movies <laughs> but move um but but watching movies um that <sighs> make things look cool that shouldn't be i guess is what i'm trying to say like th- things where i wish they would <sighs> it's hard it's hard for me to explain that the, the first thing comes to mind is guns but yeah, I uh, you know, in spite of all that, like I really love watching Terminator, and when he like like gets all the guns because he because <laughs> he has to, I'm like, oh, he's getting all the guns. He's gonna shoot all the Sarah Connors, um, <laughs> and you know that's uh, that's part of I guess part of you know who I am. I I find it um a little um uncomfortable, and yet. In spite of you know my political leanings and my feelings about such things, I'm not really gonna stop watching action movies, even if they uh, glorify, glorify uh, gun violence, and that sucks. But at this, but you know, if I can you know uh, make myself look a little shit, less shitty here, um, I would love love there to be uh, action movies that. Um, are more cognizant on how they show uh, the effects of gun violence. Like there are some movies where like, um, how do I put this? Where violence is, is seen like as, as cool and fun and it, it makes it look a little too like, Oh, it's neat that all these people are dying. Um, whereas there are other films where they are violent, but the consequences of that violence is so, present and you never like just see someone like you never just see rando ninjas get shot and then we never see them again like there are movies where violence is a very big part of the plot but we we feel the the loss if that makes any sense uh i would like to see more of that if possible until then pew pew um (laughs) pew pew uh that's how i feel um there you go Johnny, anything to add? Yeah, I, you know, like a lot of my problematic faves are people. <clears throat> yeah, like you know, that, like that there Palmer Lucky. He done stepped in it this week. I yeah, absolutely. You know, like that's What's a Palmer? That Palmer, What's Palmer. Palmer Lucky, Lucky is the guy who founded Oculus. You know, like you could it, you could easily make the argument too that he's almost like single handedly responsible for for the like VR renaissance we're in right now because you know this kid, whatever you want to call him, you know, like it, I, that's a little diminutive to call him that, but you know, this, this guy basically just started tinkering around in his garage, showed up at like a conference and was like, Hey, John Carmack, I'd really like to show you that I made a VR headset that runs your doom three game. And then, you know, like suddenly there, we've got VR headsets falling out of our asses here. Um, recently he was, uh, busted by the daily beast for putting a bunch of money into a group called Nimble America. Mm. Now he does he denies that that he he's like the group founder. Uh but the D- Daily Beast was like, yeah, he was a group founder. He was on Reddit with this name like, you know, a Nimble Millionaire fucking whatever it is and he basically donated a bunch of money uh to this group that that basically makes shitty internet like basically racist fucking propaganda propaganda. Oh god. You know like it's it's a it's a pro Trump group. And so I mean they're kind of cutting down certain religious and ethnic minorities and women and things right. like that. How cyberpunk is the sentence? The founder of the VR revolution is trying to sway an election with memes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and and so I'm like, so on one hand, I'm kind of like, I'm sort of impressed that this guy, you know, had this tech dream and sort of followed it. And I do believe that, you know, honestly, like you should be able to contribute to any sort of political leaning that you want 
with any money that you earn. Everybody's allowed to have an opinion. Everybody's allowed to have a voice. I don't like the way he did it. I don't like that he didn't contribute to a campaign or, you know, do anything kind of above board. I don't like it that he sort of secretly went on Reddit and gave a bunch of shit posters, like $10,000, so they could, you know, go ahead and get Pepe the Frog declared as a fucking hate symbol. You know, yeah. that that right there. So I'm like, okay, you know, I can kind of respect the guy from a from a technological standpoint and, and from a, hey, you go get him, Tiger, standpoint. But I'm not going to be like, you should be like Parvier Lucky, kids. You know, uh, Ricky Gervais is another one. I like I I like a lot of the entertainment that Ricky Gervais writes. I even like a lot of his stand up. You know, I like the fact that he stands up for uh, he stands up against cruelty against animals. Um, okay. But at the same time, he conducts himself in a way that I consider to be um, assholeish a lot of the time. You know, like like he 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 adheres to this whole like, ooh, I'm not gonna be politically correct. And I'm like, you know, you could probably just go ahead and say whatever you wanna say without having to preface that, right? Yeah. He's very concerned that you find him edgy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and that I'm just sort of like, oh god. You know, that makes me wonder how like what percentage of the things you say are there just because you want someone to go, oh, no. <laughs> um, you know, like like uh, even some other characters like Richard Dawkins. Um, I've read yeah. I've read a number of Richard Dawkins books, and I think Thank he's you. a great scientist, and he's a very accomplished author. But he's a shit feminist. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's very socially conscious, and I'm not going to make excuses for him. Like, well, he's an old man, and he comes from a different time. It's just sort of like, nah, dude, you have problems here, and I will yeah. fucking call you out on that. You know, so is Bill. Bill Nye is an old man, so like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> you know, uh, Bill Shatner has said some shit where he will like stick his goddamn foot in his mouth, and I'm like, oh yeah. fuck, oh Bill. <laughs> You know, um, Anthony Jeselnik is a stand-up comedian. I find his shit fucking hilarious. But <laughs> I, I, I know exactly what you're gonna say, and I, I, I used to really like him, and then I, I got to know him. I guess you could say, yeah, not not personally, but like, yeah. No, he's been a like shitty him. dude, yeah. like a really, Thanks. really shitty dude. You know, so there are like there are a lot of people that that I I respect in in certain fields, people that make me laugh or people that I find intelligent or insightful. You know, but but just because you're really good at writing books about, you know, you invented the word meme. Congratulations! I'm not going to go to you because I'm like, well, surely, Mr. Dawkins must know what the best thing to do about my emotional problems are. You know, it just it doesn't work like that. These people are not they're not amazing role models for like every aspect that we consider in life. They have uh, like accomplished themselves in amazing ways in like one particular field, sometimes two or three if you're really really good at what you do. But you know, honestly, once you step outside of that zone, I'm kind of like, okay, you know, you and I can can part respect here. Mm. All right. So, Austin, did you have yeah. any? Oh, I just said military shooter video games was my okay. problematic phase. Okay. Yeah, we're running up on our time limit here, so I just want to lightning round a couple, and then we can get going. How's that sound? Okay, that sounds cool. All right. Michael Keenan asks if possession is nine tenths of the law. What is the other ten tenth? Is that a pretty sure that's a myth? But I guess that the joke is we're supposed to say something funny. Well, uh, it was. It, uh, is it nougat? He says. Uh, it's. It uh, definitely it wouldn't be nougat. Uh, actually, I am taking a property class right now, and possession is not nine tenths of the law. I'm it guessing. I'm guessing the rest would be salt. I, I'm guessing the rest would be salt water because that just seems to be in it fucking everything. It's actually surprisingly complicated. Is the boring answer. Um, yeah. yeah. Longer 
question, maybe? We'll see if we can lightning round it. Was the Dragenda or the Dragenda? I mess it up every week. It's just, that's just your name now. I'm sorry. Uh, how did you react when you heard scientists found out that dogs hate hugs? I, I don't think that's true. I think they've been talking to the wrong dogs. <laughs> so the idea is that, like, that's a kind of a dominance display is how they interpret that if you, like, loom over them or, like, put part of your body on them. I think that's mm-hmm. probably true for a lot of dogs, but if they're socialized from, like, puppies to yeah. not see that as threatening, maybe it's different. Or maybe if they just accept that you're dominant anyway, it's probably less traumatizing. I've but had dogs not... give me hugs. You should probably not hug strange dogs or dogs that, yeah. like, you don't know how they feel about it. Yeah. yeah, that's probably upsetting to them. But, I mean, you know, you shouldn't hug strange people either. <laughs> that's very I don't, true. I don't know why you're like, oh, surely this dog wants a hug. You got to read the vibe of the room, right? You got to do social cues, even with dogs. Hell yeah. Um, I saw a dog at the law school the other day. It was like somebody's um, service animal, and it was wearing a little jacket that says, please don't pet, I'm working. And I was like... So brave, so strong. He's working so hard. <laughs> I was so proud of him. Um, nobody reminded me to talk about Clam, so I guess that cliffhanger oh, shit! goes for another week. <laughs> no! <laughs> okay. okay. Um, oh, I'll say real quick, uh, I, I watched the rest of Voltron, uh, Legendary uh, Defender. Um, real good. Uh, there, was the, there was a cliffhanger at the end of that, too, and I'm like, oh, shit, I gotta wait. Um, I guess I'll have to have to be held off like with uh, the new season of Fuller House that is coming out in December, which is weird because it's less than a year later, which is not what I expect from Netflix. But I guess they're like used to doing a sitcom and then taking only a few months off. So I don't know. Um, uh, Johnny, anything you want to say before we go? I really like it when nebulae sort of look like uncooked eggs. <laughs> cool. Cool.